Because of the dams, we also have a reliable and environmentally friendly transportation mode for our trade goods. We're able to move wood products, cars, bulk materials, and grains to and from our coastal ports. Wheat farmers have been using the rivers to get their grains from their inland farms to the export ports in Vancouver and Portland for decades now. They utilize barges to move grain efficiently and safely down the river. Here's a quick look at how our grains move from our farms to the ports. Our barges keep more trucks off the road and they're the most fuel efficient mode of handling freight. The barges also have the lowest emissions when you compare them to trucks and trains. Again, our friends at Washington Grown caught up with Kristen Mara of the Pacific Northwest Waterways Association a while ago to learn about transportation on the river. Washington's waterways, they're majestic, they water our crops, and they're also a vital part of transporting goods. In fact, the Columbia River is the third largest grain export gateway in the world. I spoke with Kristen Mara, Executive Director of the Pacific Northwest Waterways Association, about the importance of Washington's rivers, lakes, and dams. Our waterways are really the competitive advantage that our Washington state growers and producers are able to use, especially when they're trying to compete in very tough overseas markets. This is the top wheat export gateway in the country. We move more wheat out of the Columbia Snake River system than is leaving the United States any other place or any other way. Uh, so it is a very critical um, export point for those Washington state growers. For our potato farmers, our cherry farmers, and other tree fruits, peas, lentils, the list goes on of Washington grown agricultural products. They cannot uh, do what they do. They can't get out to those export markets without the ports and waterways. What's the role that Washington dams play with Washington agriculture? The dams on the Columbia Snake River system are unique here in the U.S. in that they're multi-purpose. They produce hydropower. We get 70% of our electricity here in the Northwest from clean, renewable hydropower. That really sets us apart from other parts of the country. But then the dams also provide for commercial navigation. One typical four barge tow is moving the same amount of cargo as 538 trucks. Just picture all those trucks on the highways. The dams are able to make irrigation possible. They really provide a lot of benefits. What does the future look like for Washington Waters? When you think about waterways, you need to think about them in the same way that you think about highways and bridges um, and airports and other kinds of infrastructure. It's all aging. It needs reinvestment so that our future farmers, our future producers are able to still compete overseas. We've seen how wheat gets from the farm to the grain elevator and into a barge, but where does it go from there? Tomas is in Portland with the next step in getting wheat from the Tri-Cities to the port. I'm here at the helm of the Clearwater Tugboat, where I'm going to travel alongside a batch of Washington wheat as it makes its way down the Columbia River before it's sent all over the world. Alright guys, coming loose! 
Shaver Transportation Company is a 134-year-old, family-owned tug and barge line that moves freight up and down the Columbia River system. Rob Rich, the Vice President of Marine Services at Shaver, explains how the barging process works. The export elevators will order wheat from one of the 27 upriver grain elevators uh, that load barges. So the export elevator will order one location at, say, the Dalles, order another barge for another location, such as Umatilla, order a barge for a location such as uh, Wind Dust on the Lower Snake River, and the fourth barge could be ordered into Lewiston, Idaho. So the four barges take off. The first one is dropped at the Dalles, second one dropped at Umatilla, third and fourth on the way. So you get to your destination all the way at Lewiston, then they pick up that barge when it's loaded and work their way back down the river, picking up their barges at the various elevators they've loaded at. When those barges come down to the Portland Harbor, they are distributed to the export elevators that have loaded them. The grain elevator loads into the ship, and the ships take off to the Pacific Rim. You know, China, Korea, Japan, Thailand, Sri Lanka, Philippines are the uh, final destination for the wheat from the Columbia River. We're going to head over to uh, one of our spud barges, which is a term for a tie-off. Okay. And we're going to pick up uh, an empty grain barge. These barges are 275 to 300 feet long. When you put a four-barge tow together, they're two barges wide, two barges long. When you take a 90 or 100 foot tugboat like this, you're at about 650 feet overall. Barging is by far the most fuel efficient, the most economical, uh, the most environmentally responsible and sustainable way of transporting. And you may ask, why are we not barging everywhere? It was, we don't actually. have rivers everywhere. Right. Yeah, obviously, waterways. <laughs> so, yeah, so wherever there is access to the river for farmers to bring their wheat, then you have barging. As we make our way to pick up a barge, Captain Brad lets me take over. So right now you're idling ahead. Okay. These are your throttles and engines. Okay. You can shift it hard to port. Okay. Hold on, guys. Hard to port. Pull hard to starboard there. The other way, the, the boat's going to start swinging around. You catch me out on the high seas before you know it. But when we make our way back to port, I figure I should let the pros handle it. Well, Tomas, we're going to uh, head on down to the galley. All right, look at this. This is nice. I mean, I've seen apartments smaller than this. <laughs> this is great. Then, whoa, we check out the engine room and the crew quarters. Is yeah, this there's, comfy? There's room for you. It's got to make you feel pretty proud to think that you're in this hub of Washington food and exports being sent all over the world. Washington's largest export is agricultural products, and uh, it is an amazing opportunity to be involved in it. Well, Rob, thank you so much for showing me around a tugboat. Give me a chance to drive a tugboat. Tomas, you did great. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Yeah.